Okay, you guys, we're trying this again, and I apologize the first time we had some technical difficulties trying to add Sarah May to the conversation, but if you're just joining us, this is episode number two of Empowering Women Through Fitness, and I am so excited to have my first guest with us today, Sarah May, and um, I'm going to go ahead and invite her to join us in this conversation. Um, as soon as I see her pop on that she's watching, I'll be able to add her to the conversation. Um, while you're watching, if you're just joining us, um, comment below where you're watching from as we work through these technical difficulties and I get her back on the show. So thanks for hanging in there with us. I promise this is going to work. I hope it's going to work. Um, we just get a little echo when she joins the conversation. So I'm trying to figure out what that means or what that is. Um, I'm going to try and add her. So here we go. Wish me luck. We're at action and crossing fingers. Here we go. Hello? Is it gone now? Yeah. It was me. Okay. I have okay. headphones. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so now let me introduce Sarah May. I remember um, probably around Christmas time, and thanks so much for working through that and hanging on, you guys. Um, that's the beauty of technology and also the thing about technology. So um, I met Sarah May through social media, actually, and her story really caught my attention, her profile, and I really wanted to talk to her, so I actually just reached out to her. I'm like, hey, can we do a video chat? And I just want um, get to get to know you. And... Her story was so powerful that I really wanted to share it with you guys, and she was the first person that I asked about being on my show, and I'm so happy that she said yes. So welcome, Sarah. But Hi. so you guys can get to know her a little bit better, we're going to do some icebreaker questions. So if you're ready, Sarah, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. I'm okay, ready. perfect. And thank you for struggling through that with me. I totally appreciate it. <laughs> so first question is, where did you grow up? Uh, Corvallis, Oregon, Albany and Corvallis, Oregon. Oregon, the old Oregon Trail. And yes. where do you live now? Portland, Oregon. Oh, you're still in Oregon, perfect. And yeah. what are you grateful for today? <sighs> Sunshine in Oregon. Is it sunny over there? <laughs> you're is. not in the polar vortex. No, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, good, good. For those of you who uh, are watching this on the replay, up north where my family's from is the polar vortex. Um, yes. If you could have lunch with anyone, who would it be and why? Okay, I always say Oprah for so many reasons, but yeah. I would have to say David Goggins. Oh, um, in tell, love with tell his me mindset. About him. Have you? Uh, he's an ex Navy SEAL. He's incredible. He just wrote a yes. book, Can't Hurt Me. If you I haven't read it yet, yeah. The first time I heard him speak, it was like seeing or hearing myself reflected in another human, and it stopped me in my tracks. So wow. I'm very excited that his book is out. That's awesome. What is a new skill you would like to learn? Oh my gosh, that's a good one. I would photography. Photography, that's awesome. Yep. That's yep. a good one. Um, what is one item on your bucket list that you have checked off? Uh, I got the honor of meeting George W. Bush, our 43rd Ooh, president. That's amazing. And yeah. what is another item that you'd like to check off your list? I would like to go to Greece. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so we are going to dive into Sarah May's story. If at any time you guys have any questions, Please feel free to comment below if we have time towards the end of the show. We're going to totally answer all your questions, um, as well as Sarah has committed to coming back and watch, um, reviewing all the questions, even on the replay. So if you're watching on the replay, give me a hashtag replay. And please feel free to share this if the story resonates with you, if you find inspiration from it. Um, That's the whole goal of this show. So we're just spreading inspiration and motivation, and I'm so grateful to Sarah for being here. Um, so let's get started, Sarah. Bring us back to the beginning, kind of before. Give us the introduction to your story. <laughs> All right. Um, I was living in Dallas, Texas. I was finishing my degree in sports psychology and kinesiology, getting ready for a half marathon, my first half marathon. I was a sprinter, but I was going to take it long distance, as well as a fitness competition about a week out. And I had my own boot camp business, so I was a personal trainer. And I had a little bit of pain one day. I had sprinted up the stadium stairs with my clients. I felt amazing, and then I didn't. But I knew my body well enough to know I hadn't sustained an injury. I just knew something was wrong. 
and it finally got bad enough to where I couldn't walk. I was crawling around the house, and I'm like, oh, wow. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I think this is a good time to go to the ER. Uh, so I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't need to wait till it got that bad. Um, but when I went in, they thought I had sciatica, and so they gave me morphine and sent me home, and obviously I wasn't in pain at that time. And then I believe it was 24 hours later, There's this part's a little bit foggy, but I guess I told my family I'm dying and I need to go to the ER. So were you so back home back at this point? They sent you home and then? From the hospital, yeah. So I was at home. I, I think I was in and out of consciousness, kind oh, of. Wow. There's just, yeah, I barely recall it. And then they took me back in and I instantly went into full organ failure. Um, and they said, we're going to have to put her on life support to sustain life. So I was wow. on life support, put into a coma. Um, oh my gosh, I, all of my organs were failing. They had to pump me full of medications to keep my blood flow localized to my brain and organ. And that's how I ultimately lost blood flow to my feet. They did not expect me to live. Um, I vaguely remember people saying goodbye. I kind of had, I was aware of what was going on in my coma for the most part, which was really interesting. Um, so they didn't expect me to live. I was in a coma for two weeks. And then every time they'd try to bring me out of it, I would crash. And then at some point I just turned a corner and they were able to bring me out of the coma, but I had lost, yeah, yay to that. <laughs> but I had lost blood flow to my feet. And so, yeah. I think it's 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 cold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so wait, so you're in and out of a coma for two weeks yeah. and you, 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 you said you remembered people saying goodbye to you. So was your family told yeah. that this is it? Everyone come say your goodbyes? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you really had like the sentence like, this is it. Um, but yet you hung on. Is there, and I have to ask, did you have like a praying mama or something? I did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> she actually had Jesus calling and she was sitting next to the bed. I come to find out. And then what's crazy is it's like so many times I'll hear people who've been through a coma or their loved ones and they talk about how peaceful they looked, which I looked peaceful mm. and you know, they experience these warm, fuzzy feelings. I was being murdered on a loop for two weeks. I just, I kept witnessing my own murder, experiencing it as if it was real. Really? And then there was, yeah, it's really interesting. And there was this voice is the best way I can explain it that was like if you quit fighting this will be over and you can be at peace and I was like no I can't and so I'd fight through the scene and then it would happen again and again and again and then they said that I just broke through one day is when I was able to come out of the coma and I just I just remember my last like fighting experience and then I came out of it so that's wow. like so I wonder thing. so that like blows my mind so that was like almost <clears throat> like in the spiritual realm where you're like fighting for your life yeah. Wow. And then you re distinctly remember your last fight and then you stepped out of the coma. Yeah. That gives me chills and my room is like 75 degrees in here right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. So you, your, your family is just, I mean, they got to be like ecstatic, <laughs> but then you, you come out of the coma and then, then pick up from there. Yeah, it was very interesting. Nobody really informed me of what was going on. I remember my boot camp clients came to see me and I'm like, see you at boot camp tonight. And they're like, no, like not a chance. I mean, just to give you an idea, I had gone in at 118 pounds, show ready. I mean, I think my show was in five days, so I had no body fat. And then I ballooned up to 160 pounds while in the coma because my kidneys shut down. I had to have dialysis. Yeah. And then at the end of it, I was like 80 pounds, which is insane. I mean, I looked, I'll never forget when I caught my reflection for the first time, it was like looking at a death camp prisoner. It was very bone chilling. And then I had a yeah. sensation of you fought through to live all that. And now you might die. Like I had that experience. But anyways, I woke up from the coma. I had to relearn how to use my hands. Like I couldn't grip, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't move. And I had been experiencing, so every medical procedure they did in my coma, I thought I was being tortured if you think about it, I'm experiencing my murder and so what they had done to me I was experiencing as torture so when I woke up I didn't trust anybody really? so I was silent and they thought I had brain damage and couldn't speak because I just wouldn't talk to anybody and then one day I just started speaking and moved because I wouldn't move my arms either but I just kind of came out of that and they were like oh my gosh yay wow <laughs> yeah but yeah nobody really explained it to me and then I just remember going 
something seriously wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. How did I get here? How is this my life? What is happening? And then a surgeon came in and he's like, we're going to have to amputate. I'm like, it, can, you need to get out of my house. I got, I got to go to, or not out of my house, out of the hospital room. I have to go to boot camp. Like, what are you talking about? Wow. How yeah. much, how long of a time frame was this? So you're two days out from your show. You mm -hmm. get this ridiculous pain in your body. It mm -hmm. drops you. Mm -hmm. um, and I would guess that you're a relatively healthy person. Like, is there any, was there any sort of warning signs that this was coming? Like, yeah, there was some, a little bit of pain, but I was living in such a way that I pushed through pain, right? Like we mm -hmm. do that as athletes and then, you know, we're go-getters and all of that. There's, there has to be a little bit of a off switch or at least like a ease back switch. And I just didn't sure. ever do that. Um, I had lifted heavy my whole life. I mean, I leg pressed a thousand pounds right before that happened. And so I didn't really, pain didn't hit my scale until it was that bad where I'm crawling. So yes, yeah. there had been some discomfort in my hip. I'd always had some kind of clicking and just discomfort there. And then when I woke up from the coma, I said, my hip hurts really bad. That's what had taken me in. And then, you know, I was a train wreck <laughs> from top to bottom, but the pain was the most prevalent part in my hip. And they were like, that's least your problem. So that actually did not get discovered until I went through limb salvage. They were trying to keep my feet for about a year and I was mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. And then when I finally went to have the amputation surgery, they x-rayed my hip and they were like, they think this is where it started, but I thought wow. I had osteomyelitis in my hip and got into my bloodstream. Okay. <laughs> take a deep breath here. So let take me back to, um, you, you started kind of telling me, so the surger, surgeon comes in the room and mm -hmm. mind you, you just explained to us how much of an athlete you are, which is incredible in and of itself for somebody to be that. And I can understand how you'd have the mentality just to push through pain and push through those things. Yeah. So he comes in and he tells you, we have to amputate both of your legs. Mm -hmm. What goes through your head? Well, I told him to get the F out. Because that's kind of my personality. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I put that away. It wasn't really, I couldn't even register what that meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was so far out of the realm of anything that made sense for me that it was almost like someone came in speaking Chinese and I was meant to understand it. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure they did their best and maybe they explained it, but I just didn't really receive it. And then Luckily, a nurse had come in and she said, she's an athlete. We've got to let her fight. And that's where she pointed me towards limb salvage. And I did hyperbaric treatments and stuff. And I actually had profound healing. It just finally didn't make sense. It wasn't enough to So live this was during the time you were in the wheelchair. Yeah. So even being in a wheelchair is, oh. is hard enough. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the way you just sighed there that just bringing you back to that. Mm-hmm. So that's step one. I mean, we should have started there. Like, that's that's one way to learn how to live, like just in a wheelchair and being mobile like that. Yeah. And then, so at what point? So fight. So they're gonna let you fight for a while. Did you fight mm -hmm. for a whole year for this? I did. I probably fought longer than I should. There was a lot of other dynamics at play as well. But I needed to know that I was that I tried everything I could. Mm -hmm. And that I was making the decision out of choice and not out of fear and force. Because there was a lot of like, you're going to die. Your life is, you know, there was just so many things that mm -hmm. people are trying to narrate your story for you. And I needed to know that I was writing my own story. I was willing mm -hmm. to roll the dice. I do not recommend that for anybody. But for me, like, that's how, that's the only way that I knew I could let my head hit the pillow at night. Wow. Plus, I had to get out of a bad relationship. There was a few things I had to take care of. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that part? Because that's, I that's probably a lot should. to be going through to be in a bad relationship on top of that. Yeah, and it really contributed to all of this. Um, you know, when you're living in a lie, like I knew, first of all, I knew at high that it was not a good idea. Mm. And then out of fear and out of just some ways that I was living my life, I got into that. And then I made it worse by moving to another state. And then I made it worse by like, trusting someone too much and giving them too much control and power until I believed I was stuck. And all I had to do was walk out the door, but I didn't. Right. 
you know, and I just, I describe it as being in a burning building and like meditating your way through it. Like, I just was like, it's okay. Med it's good. It's good. So there was just a scream in me and I was silencing it. So that pain and, you know, the pain that I had that finally landed me in the ER, it was a physical representation of where I was at spiritually, really. It's like I was headed towards life support in every aspect of my life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's, and yeah, that's crazy. Um, so they, they gave you this, this, I don't know what to call it, this news. And yeah. then you fight over it for a year because you're a fighter. Mm -hmm. And then talk to me about coming to the decision mm -hmm. of agreeing to this procedure. It felt like a lamb taking itself to the slaughter is the mm -hmm. best way that I can do it justice. It just was like, this is it. Like, that's my only option. And it feels like I'm signing my death warrant because I was. The Sarah up until that point was about to die. And, you know, I worked with a lot of injured vets and civilians and people that have gone through a lot of traumas and a lot of warriors who, you know, life has brought them to their knees and on their backs mm -hmm. and there's this element of you no longer think you're a fighter or a warrior. You think you're less than, you think you're weak. And it's like the strongest posture you'll ever fight in is on your knees and on your back. Because the person who fights through that, that is way more powerful than me sprinting up stadium stairs, leg pressing a thousand pounds. Like the me who fought to just lift my leg without half of it there, a tiny ounce, that was the hardest fight I've ever had to fight. Or just for my own, you know, my own mindset that whole, it was moment by moment, like second by second, four years. <laughs> wow. If you guys have any questions for Sarah, please feel free to comment. And if we have time, we'll get to those. But um, that is, that's crazy. So you go through this procedure. Mm -hmm. And so first you had to learn everything after the coma. And <laughs> now you have to learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. How to eat these these new legs, if you can even call them that. Yeah. Were you angry? I was heartbroken. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just now getting a little bit angry, which angry is such a more, it's a more helpful emotion, I would say. Okay. Um, but I just, I try to channel it in a positive way, but I was just so heartbroken, but also it's my default to be hopeful. So I just always, like, I remember putting those legs on, which your first couple pair of legs are heavy and weird, and they're just, they're not off. Like, I have really cool blades that basically make me friends. They're awesome. But that's not what your first pair of legs are like. And I remember going, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, as I'm, like, you know, hobbling with the locker. And honestly, I thank God the 30 year I was an athlete my whole life, and so that served me. It's like... I got into personal development at probably six. It, I was always prepared for this. I, so I had the tools. I knew that we could change our mindset. I came from, you know, not great background, uh, depression, addiction, all those things. And I was just born knowing that we have the power to change the story. So I'd already been walking that out in my life. And I knew I was like, you know, when everybody's like, why me? I was like, I understand why me. And I made a decision to define it because I knew if I didn't, it would define me. So in every single second, like I get really emotional when I think about the wheelchair because I knew that I'm going to be able to move my body again. I'm not stuck here. So I didn't for one second allow myself to feel bad for myself because I knew that I had more movement than a lot of people. And that was a gift that I needed to give gratitude for and that I would one day walk out in my own life. So when I, I like to do a lot of, um, like walks and rucks and stuff to tribute uh, fallen soldiers and different things like that and doing it for a purpose, realizing that we can move our bodies. Like that's a gift. Yeah. It's honoring others. It's honoring those who can't do that. You know, it's honoring myself who was stuck in the wheelchair and couldn't move and was being pushed around just like, not even broken, broken is not the right word, but just heartbroken at that time. So you said you wanted to you did want it to define you. You were going to define it or what happened to you. How do you define it? It's a moment by moment thing. I mean, I don't sleep with my legs on, obviously. 
sleep. And so in the middle of the night, if I need to get up and use the restroom, I have to like strap my legs on. It's a process which really only takes two seconds. But there is a moment that I catch myself once in a while of wanting to be like, oh, this sucks. And I do not, even delirious, half asleep at three in the morning, I'm like, I get to do this and get up and go use the restroom. There are people who cannot. I used to have not been able to. So things like that, it is a moment by moment using so my it's, mindset. It's constantly. Mm -hmm. You're constantly, constantly having to work on your mindset. And if I, let me ask you this, because I don't think I asked you this the first time we talked. How long ago was that? <laughs> it was a process. So March 2012 okay. is when I almost died. I think it was March 22nd was my first visit. 24th was when I went in and didn't come out for a while. And then November 2013 is when I had my amputations. And then at that time, they realized my right hip was destroyed. So then I had two hip replacement surgeries in the summer of 2014. So I just felt like yeah, you get over this hump, and then there's, like, another giant mountain range. <laughs> it, just yeah. was a, it was a process. Wow. So so about four years ago. So even to this day, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, can, I can understand why it would still be a day-to-day -day moment. But mm -hmm. so you tell us about, so, I mean, you're just getting over, you're getting over all of this. So you're just one mountain at a time, if you will. Yeah. And then um, tell me about, like, learning how to walk again or learning how to use your new legs and just like how how do you have your mindset around that like how do you like i'm just it, this is <laughs> this is crazy for me yeah. because like i want i don't want to take for granted every moment that i have and yeah. hearing a story like yours like any one of us anybody watching right now could have something mm -hmm. taken away from them in the moment and yep. We have to, we go through all these emotions and create our whys and understand why me. And, and I, I was telling, when I was telling some people about having you on, I'm like, she, it's crazy though because even though all this happened to her, she has like the coolest attitude about it. Like she's so chill. <laughs> and I'm sure you're not always chill about it. But tell us, like, tell me some of the, like, like you said you're just starting to get angry. Talk about that emotion. Um... You know, it's funny, usually anger for me, it's not really an emotion that rises for me. So when it does, it usually means there's something I'm not doing that I need to do. Um, so I'd have to really think about when and how anger, how, it's more so, I get, I get angry at delays now. Like when something pops up that holds me back, because as you can imagine, this was, a, was such a long process that that makes me really mad. I'm like, there's no longer time to delay. And you said something on your IG today about um, something that Lori had said. I was just thinking about it. Oh, your how season. you don't want to get stuck in your winter. Yeah. Yeah. And my one of my favorite quotes is that someone once told me the definition of hell and that it's your last day on earth, the person that you became meets the person that you could have become. And I had that face off. And I still do. That's when I get mad because back then I didn't celebrate myself. I always tell people that I work with, like create your own scrapbook, like live your life as if you're the parent giving yourself a scrapbook. Cause I never honored myself. I never, you know, Hey, you like pressed a thousand pounds. That's really cool. You know, so people were asking, they're like, how much in my, the, the guys were like, how much did you press? <laughs> <laughs> a thousand. That's not, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, so just stuff like that. And like, I didn't even ever record that because I didn't want, you know, oh, who does she think she is type of a thing. Well, now <laughs> those feet are gone. Like I'll do mm -hmm. new, you know, impressive feats in my new reality, but I'm yeah. sad that I didn't love her enough to just document her and celebrate her and stuff like that. Yeah. But anyways, getting delayed really makes me mad delayed. because I did. Yeah. Delayed. I had that realization. I, I was born knowing that we had incredible human potential that we were created on purpose for a purpose. And I came to realize, you know, all the ways in which I was holding myself back and that others hold themselves back. And now it's like, I'm a thoroughbred who's been held in the race lines and I'm ready to run. And so I have that fire in me and yeah. I just get frustrated when I'm delayed. So you refer to yourself a lot, almost, almost in third person where you're like my own self in my new mm -hmm. self. And one of the things you told me is you're really learning how to um, like, um, what was your intro, like how you're trying to heal yourself from the inside out. So what is, mm -hmm. how would you describe new Sarah, Sarah May? 
I'm learning how to trust myself first and foremost. Um, you know, a lot of times I think we have these qualities that we're meant to have for our purpose. It's like, again, I knew that I was supposed to live out for one, I was breaking cycles of addiction, mm -hmm. of depression, of all of those things. So that's going to take a certain level of grit and intensity, right? Yeah. Uh, that served me. But when you're pointed in the wrong direction and going down a wrong path, you're basically paving a highway to hell in your life. So then it's like there was an element of I don't trust those qualities in me, even though those qualities are very necessary for me. I wouldn't have fought through what I fought through. And I wouldn't be alive today if I didn't have those. And so it's really coming full circle, reclaiming who I know that I am, and then doing it in such a way that it's like more holistic. It's loving myself. I catch, I still catch myself. It's like I'm flying too high, I'm pushing too hard. And then I'm like, all right, scale it back a little. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to scale it back all the way, just scale it back a little. So it's just having that balance and walking in trust with myself. Wow. So that's amazing. So I kind of want to get to um, the other side of your story. And so when we were talking, you were kind of sharing with me some new goals or kind of some new things that the new Sarah May has to, that wants to do. So you still are total athlete to the core, which I, I absolutely love and respect. So tell me about some of the new things that you're thinking about or that gets you excited now. <laughs> it's more like gets me sick. The one I Does have it? been a runner. Yeah, well, one, running. I really need to reclaim that, but I'm okay. just not even going to lie. Running was the place where I had all of my peace, and it was mm -hmm. my greatest power. And so now I've never had to walk out being a beginner in that. You know, same mm -hmm. thing in the gym, which there's a lot of just feeling sick, feeling grief. It's like, I'm not someone who's like, let me sign up for grief. I get that working through it is beneficial for us. But I still have that element of like the gym has a little bit of heaviness for me and yeah. running. I'm like, I haven't even, I haven't even signed myself up for that challenge. Yeah. No, I, it makes me sick to think about, I mean, I've ran a few times, but I need to become a runner again. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted, I'm a sprinter, but it's funny because I've developed a long distance mentality, which it makes sense for me too, because there's just no limits. It's like, there's only so fast you can run in a short distance. Sure. Um, but I want to train to take on some long distance challenges eventually. That's amazing. So, mm -hmm. um, I believe you can do it. And I will be excited to watch your journey because I understand and kind of how we're, my post on IG today, it's like, it's always unfolding and you're always kind of peeling back layers as you grow, as you like deal yeah. with all the emotions and you go through these phases. Um, so I'll be, I'll be happy to watch, watch that part. Um, oh, um, thank you. I believe in you 100% because I know you're a thank fighter. You. Um, we're going to try, let's see if anybody has any questions. I know we had the questions about how much you um, were listening <laughs> and stuff and that's cool. Um, um, and also, you guys, I posted her links up in the description. I would love for you to follow her on Instagram and Facebook. She She's doing some big things, and I'm really excited mm -hmm. for her. I think this is kind of just the beginning, and I'm just starting to see you now share your story, um, which I think is um, really, really exciting because I, I think once you get to a place where you're comfortable sharing your story, you start being able to have peace with it, and understand that, yes, this happened to me, this was a terrible thing, but how can I now take this, what was a negative thing, and use it in a positive way? I think right. that's kind of like a game changer, and I can say that for experience, having gone through a lot of different, um, completely different challenges than you. Um, I'm not gonna say one's worse than the other, all, mm -hmm. but very different challenges. And we mm -hmm. all have those, everybody right. has their own story. And yep. um, I think one thing that we can all get you know, take away from your story is not to take anything for granted and really have that appreciation and kind of how you're saying you wish you would have celebrated moments or, or just been mm -hmm. more appreciative or under, um, had more respect or maybe even listen to your body or listen to yeah. your instincts in a relationship um, aspect of it. So there's so much that we can take away, whether you've been through something like Sarah May or you've not, um, there's a lot of value in that. Um, so Gabe asks, can you run with your prosthetics? I can, and I actually, yeah, I can in my current legs, and I have brand in these, um, and I just got granted with a pair of running running blades. These you can run in. 
but okay. specific are those the ones so, that are just like the hook yeah like these ones have tennis shoes on my prosthetist is, if any of you <laughs> need a prosthetist my prosthetist is david why did i just forget? Davidson, Greg Davidson, that's why, okay. um, out of Puyallup, Washington, and he's amazing. He invented these that I have, but oh, wow. I'm getting a new pair fitted um, in a couple months, so I will start. So running. then this is a totally naive question, but do you have different legs for different occasions? I do. I have high heel feet that I got from Heather Abbott and her foundation, which is incredible, and then I really just wear, I wear these a lot. My cheetahs a lot, or yeah. they're not cheetahs, but my blades. Okay, and then you just wear pants over them or whatever, or don't? No? Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool depending yeah yeah <laughs> okay well that is amazing um and i love i'm so happy that you've been here i'm so happy you get took time to just share your story and spend some time with us and i hope that you guys watching have found some value in this um some inspirations yes. and hope um i want to leave the audience um with a question or an answer from you and then um i'll let you go well, what would you okay. say to a woman who's watching this show who desires to be more empowered? Okay. I would like to say that life is always happening for you and not to you. And then it's also responding to you. And you've always had the power and you have the power now. It's like life is responding to us and you can radically shift your life if you just take the power that you have. Take control of your thoughts. A lot of people don't realize that your feelings are a side effect of a habitual thought pattern. So if you're in a space where your feelings aren't great, start to pay attention to your thoughts and shift your thoughts and take different action. That's amazing. Well, Sarah, I want to thank you so much oh, for being thank here. Thank you so much. You any of my, my people. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. You're welcome. I was just going to say any of my people who are on here and are new to you, your story is incredible. You guys need to watch it. Where's the easiest way to get your story? The one that you did recently. It's beautiful. Oh, um, they'll have to I'll post it. The videos. I'll or I can share it again. Oh, thank you. That's okay. great. Yes. That's awesome. Well, I look forward to our relationship continuing because you're oh, a person I want to keep in my back pocket. But Same. All right. Well, perfect. You can go ahead and sign off now. But thank you so much for being right. here. Thank you for sharing the workout or the, um, what are those technical difficulty <laughs> things we had? Um, yes. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you so Episode much for number one in the books for Sarah May. Yes. Thank you Love for you believing in my vision. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. Thank you. Well, she signs off, you guys. I want to say thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys found this story inspirational. If you're watching on the replay, feel free to go back and comment and ask her questions and show her some love. Share this video if you found it inspiring. Um, next week, I have my next guest. And you guys have guests lined up all the way through April, so I'm so excited to be coming to you every week sharing you some great stories. Um, if you have a guest you'd like to nominate, if you would like to apply to be on the show, I have all those links in the description above. So thank you so much for watching. If you need help with your coaching or fitness or men's mindset or anything, I'm here for you. There's a link for that as well. Thanks again, you guys, and we will see you next week, same time, same place. I hope you feel empowered. Have a good night.